Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Triple D. So we're glad to be with y'all today. It has warmed up significantly down here. Yeah. So last week, uh, short sleeve. Yeah, one of our deacons last week was saying y'all are complaining about it being cold in there. Well, now it's too warm, <laughs> so we're complaining again. <laughs> so that deacon's not going to be happy with us. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. You know, we're we're perpetually making people angry or such. Hey, no, we're falling okay. too. We're we're definitely <laughs> falling sinners. That's for sure. But. We are glad to be with y'all today. So we are almost done. We're getting very, very close to being done, at least, on our doctrine of Christ as the mediator. And then we're going to go to another chapter as well. So we're going to just keep plugging along. And eventually, given about 40 years, we'll get done with this, actually. This was going to cause a lot of discussion. The next one is going to be interesting. So the next chapter, chapter uh, 9, actually, is going to be on free will. That'll cause a lot of conversation. That one's going to be an interesting one. So we uh, we did Doctrine of Covenants. We've done Doctrine of Sin. Yeah. Uh, so those were some controversial ones, too. This yeah. one just about everybody agrees on yeah. with Christ the Mediator. But next one, though, that's going to be an interesting one. We'll wear, we'll wear a bulletproof vest. We'll right? have fun with that one, though, I think. So that'll be an awfully fun one. All right. Well, today we are still discussing Christ the Mediator. So we're going to be talking about some redemptive history. Now, Redemptive history, we're going to look at the entirety of the Bible and see how this all points to Christ, how it all points to the cross of Christ. We're going to go Old Testament. We're going to go New Testament as well. We're going to see a few different things from Westminster as well. A little bit shorter section today, though, but that's okay. We'll get through all of it, Lord willing. And I'm going to read our section then, Steve. With no further ado, we'll jump right on into it. Although the work of redemption was not actually wrought by Christ till after his incarnation, yet the virtue efficacy and benefits thereof were communicated unto the elect in all ages successively from the beginning of the world in and by those promises types and sacrifices wherein he was revealed and signified to be the seed of the woman which should bruise the serpent's head and the lamb slain from the beginning of the world being yesterday and today the same and forever so we're going to be discussing redemptive history today so steve Let's discuss this. Since we okay. are, we're in an American evangelical context in this country and in our churches as well, uh, we're Reformed Christians, but we're also evangelical Christians. Right. And a lot of evangelical Christians are going to be persuaded or we're going to have a deep culture of dispensationalism mm-hmm. in our culture and in our climate and in our context. So, And what that simply means is that you put a bigger dividing line between the Old and the New Testament. Yeah. So you put that big wall between it. You know, this is for the Jews. This is for the church. Uh, there's promises to the nation of Israel. There's promises to the church. Whereas we, as Reformed Christians, believe that we're one. That there's the Old Testament church. There's the New Testament church. We're one people. Uh, there are promises that are only for the church. Uh, there's Israel has become the church in effect. Uh, Ken Gentry, a friend of Steve's, actually is writing a book on that in Revelation, where he discusses a lot of that stuff, and that's just pure, plain, and simple vanilla covenant theology. Uh, we've talked about that before in our previous chapter in Westminster Seven. So, Steve, my question to you is: Therefore, with that understanding that there's not a huge wall between the Old and New Testament, we know how we're saved in the New Testament. It's by f- grace through faith in Christ Jesus. How were people of the Old Testament saved, and was there any difference whatsoever? Well, I think the first answer to that is they were saved the very same way. But I think we've got to give some more details than that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, the, the illustration that I have used over the years that I'm comfortable with is many of us are carrying a charge card mm-hmm. in, our, in our pocket. Mm-hmm. And we walk into a store and we give, we give the merchant that charge card, and they'll charge 20 bucks. I get to walk away with my purchase, but I don't have to pay for it for 30 days down the road. Mm-hmm. And in a way, that's what the Father did mm. in the Old Testament. They're saved the same way by the death of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. but, but it's looking forward to the death mm-hmm. where we're looking back. And it, that death of Christ was so sure that it was going to happen he was going to live the perfect life. He would not make a mistake. He would die. He would save his people, which included the Old Testament and the New Testament. It just depends where we're looking back or we're looking forward. Mm-hmm. 
They look forward, we look back, but we're all saved the same way. Absolutely. So, yes, salvation has always been by Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Just one looking forward, one looking backwards. So we look backwards. We look at this, the entirety of the Bible. We see everything in the Scriptures. And we have the greatest privilege as well because we have the entirety of the Scripture. Yes. And many times we look back at the Old Testament and think about what would have been like to have been around when David, when David was there or, or Moses or someone mm -hmm. like that. And as great as that was, we really have a greater privilege today mm -hmm. because we have the entire Bible. They didn't have the entire Bible. Absolutely. Jesus said uh, in John chapter 8, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced at its coming. Yes. So Abraham was looking for that. Mm -hmm. uh, all the Old Testament saints were yearning for that. Hebrews 11 makes that clear, too, that they were walking by faith in the coming promises, mm -hmm. not as though the promise had already been fulfilled, though Christ was, of course, slain before the foundation of the world. We're going to get into more of that detail here and there. Uh, but yes, absolutely. So there, there is some difference there, of course, because they're looking forward, we're looking back. But in its essence, it is the same salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are only saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. So, Steve, therefore, if that's the if that's the case, uh, so was not wrought by Christ his redemption till after his incarnation, but the virtue and efficacy of that is already done in the Old Testament, of course. They're saved on that charge card, so to speak. So when was the covenant of grace, therefore, initiated? When did God enter into that covenant of grace to save us? I think the Bible teaches that that was started in Genesis chapter 3 at mm -hmm. the fall itself. Mm -hmm. So the moment that Adam and Eve sinned and threw all of the world and all of us into sin, mm -hmm. Grace came at that very moment mm. when God the Father said, I will do this. Here's mm -hmm. what I'll do. And, and, and we have the first hint of the coming Savior. Mm -hmm. It starts as a whisper, and it just builds and builds over time. It gets louder as the Bible goes along. But I would, I would say the Bible is very clear. Mm. It starts in Genesis chapter 3. Absolutely. I fully agree. And uh, th you know they were looking for that savior too yes because eve thought that it was cain at yes, first her and first son she yes, thought her first son thought well maybe this is the seed of promise mm -hmm. and it obviously wasn't because he killed the other one but so, it shows you where her heart was yes she was a fallen sinner who got through all through us into sin but she was a believer absolutely absolutely noah's father did the same thing the name noah itself means rest so he thought maybe he will be the one to yeah. give us rest, and he wasn't, of course. But that was fulfilled in Christ Jesus, where the covenant of grace is reaching its fullest point as well. It's not just through the whisper anymore. Now we see the Lamb yeah. himself. Absolutely. It's great stuff, Steve. So if if we read here, too, it says that he was revealed and signified, but beforehand it was by promises, types, and sacrifices wherein he was revealed. So a lot of these are sacraments. So in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, we have circumcision and we have the Passover meal. So in the New Testament, we have baptism and we have the Lord's Supper, which are corresponding. So was Christ communicated in those sacraments, in those types and significations? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. When you think of the Passover, it was pointing towards the Lamb of God and the blood that would be spilled by Jesus Christ. And, mm -hmm. and when you think of circumcision, Again, it's a it's a it's a blood sacrifice mm. pointing to Christ, and now the now the sacrifice has been done once and for all. There's no need of blood, and mm. sacraments in the New Testament are bloodless. Absolutely. So we have the better sacraments, but Christ communicated benefits through those sacraments mm. of the Old Testament, through the types and shadows. We have them much more clearly now. And if you read through the prophets, it's almost like they're looking through glass that's been punched. Mm. It's yeah. almost it's hard to see and hard to make out sometimes. Yeah. It's very shadowy, but he's still there though. The essence of the image is still there, but we see it fulfilled in the New Testament, though, and it's most clear there. So absolutely. So we have Christ in the Old Testament. He's there. It's hard to make out sometimes as well, but he is there, though, and salvation was still by him. And I think as, as someone reads their Bible every day and they're having their devotions, mm -hmm. one thing we should all do when we're in the Old Testament is look for Jesus. Absolutely. Find Jesus in the Old Testament. When you read through a chapter of the Old Testament, say, okay, where where is Jesus mm -hmm. in this chapter? And we're going to see that very, very clearly in one of our proof texts. So I set you up. Huh? So you set me up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So is let's answer one other question, too, because a lot of folks will say, well, this is plan B in a certain way. You know, this is so did did God from all eternity decree Christ to die? Oh, absolutely. There the idea that the Bible teaches a plan 
B is really a slap in God's face mm -hmm. as if God didn't know something was going to happen and now he has to regroup. Mm -hmm. If God is truly sovereign, then there, he knew everything that was going to take place. So mm -hmm. no, there's no plan B. This was the plan of God from day one. Absolutely. Sin is part of the plan of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. We may not fully understand that, but we learn things about God because sin is, we mm -hmm. learn about his grace. You learn about his justice, his judgment. Absolutely. He's not the cause of sin, but he works with sin, though. Right. And he uses his, uses it as a tool in his hands, right. just like he uses you and I as tools in his hands as well. So And can even use the devil. Absolutely. Well, he yeah. used that in Job, one of yeah. your favorite ones. Yeah. So so he used Job as a as an or, uh, mm. used Satan as an instrument as well. So Steve, let's go ahead and jump into our okay. proof text then and we'll uh begin to look at some of these. So if you would read us Galatians four, four through five. And we want to think about here uh God causes Christ to be born in time, mm -hmm. though this was all planned outside of time. Yeah what was going to happen. Go ahead and read that. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, mm. so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. The fullness of time came. Mm. God's time came for Jesus to be born. It wasn't a second thought. It wasn't a mistake. It was all part of God's plan before the world was created. Absolutely. And it was the best time that it could have occurred mm. to was right then during the era of the Roman Empire. So I'm going to look at our big proof text here then. So we're okay. going to read Genesis 3.15. Okay. And this is the Proto-Evangelium or the first gospel as it's often called. So we read here, and this is God speaking, And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. And that is so clearly talking about our Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is so clearly talking about he who crushed the head of Satan. So Satan bit his heel on the cross as Christ died and suffered. But he rose again and crushed the head of the serpent. And you think about how early that is. Absolutely. That's the chapter where Adam and Eve fall mm -hmm. for the first time. We're in sin. And right there we have the mm -hmm. promise of a coming Messiah. God sacrifices two animals, covers Adam and Eve with mm -hmm. it, and gives them that promise. In the middle of all the curses... In the middle of all the curses that are going to happen because of that first sin, mm -hmm. the ground is going to be hard. You're going to have pain and childbearing. You're going to have strife in your marriage. In the midst of all that, he gives hope. He gives a promise. And even Adam knew that promise. Yeah. They knew that promise, and they were looking for it. And thousands of years later, it comes to pass in Christ Jesus. And we have the first blood in that chapter. We have the first too. blood there with the sacrifice, yes, pointing also to Christ. So, Steve, if you would then turn to the exact other end of the Bible then. Yeah. And read Revelation 13, 8 for us. Okay. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written from the foundation of the world and the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. Mm. Before the foundation of the world, this was not plan B. This That's has right. always been the plan of God, was to save us by the mediator, Christ Jesus, who was slain before the foundation of the world, made in time, but also made outside of time. Mm -hmm. And the doctrine goes back to the sovereignty of God. It's all about the sovereignty Does of God. Does God know what's going to happen? Absolutely. He's planned it all mm -hmm. uh, from eternity's past. So there's well. not a need for a plan B. There is no need for it. Absolutely. I'm going to read Hebrews 13, okay. 8 then as our last major proof text here. So here we read just a simple statement. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Christ never changes. Salvation has never changed. It is always by him, through him, to his glory, and it will always be through him. Mm -hmm. Salvation can only come through Christ Jesus. Adam and Eve knew this when they fell in the garden. Moses knew this. Abraham knew this. Every Old Testament saint knew that it was in the coming one. They might not have been able to articulate his name just yet, but they knew who was coming. And then Christ says in John chapter 8, Abraham saw my day and he rejoiced. And that's because the Pharisees did not recognize him at all. They were children of Satan, not children of Christ. That's for certain. But, Steve, I think that'll end us for the okay. day then. So if you would, go ahead and end us with Psalm 118, 1 through 4. Okay. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let Israel say his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let the house of Aaron say his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let those who fear the Lord say... His loving kindness is everlasting. Mm. Everlasting from the foundation of the earth to eternity onwards. 
So Christ, I, I heard a great quote the other day, and I'll end with this too, yeah. that uh, it was from Gerhardus Voss, actually. God never began to love you because he always has loved you. Yeah, that's good. And that is a great quote. I'll leave us with that for the day. Yeah. So thank you all for being with us here today. Uh, if you're a member of our congregation, I will be seeing you next week. I will be uh, exhorting at a church up north. Uh, Steve will be here, of course, this Lord's Day. So we encourage yeah. you to come on out to Sunday worship, of course. So we encourage you to be there. Until then, may God richly bless you. Thanks for being here with us today.